It may look like a Tesla Cyber Cab from the front or a Toyota Prius from the back, but what you cannot deny is that this Tesla Model Y looks great in red with its new redesigned interior and redesigned exterior the tesla model y is definitely one to look out for today we're going to be checking out the basic tech that you get with a tesla and before we get started don't forget to subscribe for your free blinker fluid we'll get it to you as soon as we restock people always ask me what ev should i get and my question to them is always like what do you care about do you care about space do you care about range or do you care about tech? Well, for me, I care about tech. So in these next few videos, we'll see which EV has the best tech. Well, we're starting with the new Model Y Juniper. So let's check it out. The Chinese has the best technology in the EV market, if we're being honest. And we are only limited in Canada to certain choices. So to start it off, let's see how you enter the car. So to enter your Tesla, you got three options. You got your card, you got your Apple Watch, you got your cell phone, you got your iPad, and you got pretty much a list of tech that can connect to the internet that can open just the door. So to open it, just tap on it and you enter. Pretty cool. As soon as you get in the car, you're pretty much greeted with a steering wheel and screen. The real question is, where do you start? I mean, lucky for you, they have a bunch of tutorials and everything, but where do you still start? There is no gear stock. There's an indicator button. I guess the best place to start is the little icon. <laughs> and as we can see, it pops up everything from our controls, to the car dynamics, to charging, to autopilot, to the locking, to the lights, to the seats to everything in the car. We're gonna start with the control. It's the first thing that comes up as soon as you open up your icon there. So you have the control, which lets you control your lights, fold your mirrors. It looks like you can save it to location. So if you do get to your garage, save the location. And when you pull up, it would just fold the mirrors automatically for you. You have the child lock button here, your window lock button here. You got the glove box button here. You also have your windshield wiper settings, your mirror adjustment settings, your steering settings, the sentry mode settings, the saving something happened dash cam settings, the car wash settings, and to put the car in neutral is now in the settings. And also screen brightness. The next control you get is the dynamics on the vehicle. Now, this is not the sports version of these vehicles, so you're limited to what you can control. But from what I can see here in this, you can choose your acceleration, how much force you want on that pedal, and you can choose your regen braking, how strong do you want it. You can also choose your traction control mode. You can also choose your steering wheel weight. You can check more on that on our shorts. And you can also choose auto shift, which lets the car decide where you want to shift to. Now in the charging settings, you can also choose what percentage you want to charge to. You can choose the amps that you want to charge at. And when you go on trips, your pricing of your charge and how much you spent to charge will be put here. And you can also schedule your charging. Next is your autopilot. The autopilot, you can choose between full self-driving, which is what everybody uses, and or auto stare or traffic aware cruise control which is just stop signs and traffic lights but that's more on the fsd if you want more on fsd there's a lot of channels that can give you more breakdowns into them but you can have a lot of settings on that too the lock as you can see you can choose which key card all your settings in here hands-free trunk driver on lock mode you get a notification on your phone if you left your windows or doors open and once you close your door and lock it it will automatically close it so you can't say you forgot to close your windows and you can also automatically link it not automatically but you can link it to your my cube garage in case you do have that and when you're coming up to the garage it will automatically open it for you instead of pressing a button and next is the lights as you guys know like you can control your lights from this already adaptive lights we show that in the shorts uh, you headlights after exit 
accent lights as you know is now a thing you can change the colors dome lights and the footlights too next you have the seats if there's nobody in the seat you can also move it up and down and also give the people in the back um, their heating if they need heating too and also next thing is you can fold the back seats from here now uh, and also child lock specific door from here everything from here next one is the display you can change the display you can send it to auto so based on how it is outside day or night it will automatically change or you can choose your preference yourself you can have the blue light option at night and your brightness blind spot monitors yeah it will come up on your screen actually blind spot monitors cleaning the screen or repair and scroll functions here the next setting is the scheduling when you want your car to precondition for you so let's say you it's cold outside and you leave your house every day at 7 a.m the car will actually get the car ready for you heated and warmed up for you by 7 a.m each morning so all you have to do is just get in the car and just drive off and next is your charging you can schedule your charging let's say you get home you plug it but you don't want to charge it till later at night perfect for you and next is the safety the car has like eight plus cameras and this is where you can enable that security mode for yourself when you leave the car the car will be always recording to see if anybody's gonna touch your car or anything happens you can just dis disable it you can enable it for your phone and so many other things rare cost traffic so when someone's going behind you and you're not checking it will let you know that hey there's a car behind you uh, blind spot light uh, the chime glove box pin pin to drive so if you don't want anybody to just get in your car and drive you can set a pin uh, and parental controls if you have kids you can set that too speed limiters cabin heat protection so if it's hot really it gets warm in this car so your best bet sometimes is to leave it on so that it doesn't get too hot in the car. Uh, you got your security alarms. Joe mode is for if you don't want all the chimes and stuff going off. And also parking brake, emergency parking brake, just a button away. Um, just press on the brake and it will enable for you. Speaking of tech, how do you put this car in drive? it's all tech again so if this is going to be a problem for you you might have to reconsider so you just swipe it up and you're good to drive you need to park anywhere you can literally just park press the button and it'll park for you To be honest though, I do feel like I could have done that faster myself, personally speaking. But if you have a fear of backing up into a parking spot, this is gonna be your best friend because if you need to parallel park or just park, this can do it for you. You actually get quite the view when it comes to cameras in this car. So you have the back camera, you have the side two cameras, you do have the pillar cameras, which are for self-driving only, but now with the new model, you have a new camera, which is the front camera. It does make me feel a little woozy when I'm driving, but we'll just leave it without a camera. So they don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or any of that stuff. Once you use the Tesla UI, it's not that bad, to be honest. This is another part of their tech, their full self-driving capability. And if you have long road trips or long commutes, this might actually be the car for you. Another best part about Tesla is their constant software updates. If that's gonna matter for you when it comes to software updates, then you have to look at the manufacturers do they constantly update their cars what are the customers saying about their software updates if they don't then you know you're going to be stuck with a outdated software version overall the car does pretty much everything you need to do if full self-driving or the car being able to drive itself is very extremely important to you then I would pretty much suggest that you do 
look into that, whichever car manufacturer you're gonna get. In North America currently, in 200 meters, turn right. Tesla has the best full self-driving. That's just hands down. But when you go to a global scale, then we have some real competition with the Chinese market. Now let's see what it's gonna do here. Nope. <laughs> the timing of that was crazy. <laughs> I was expecting it to keep going, but it didn't. So it's still in beta. Remember, it's still in beta. Just remember that when you're driving the car. Um, and if that matters to you, just keep an eye on the car until they've said it's unsupervised. Um, I'm, I'm glad we got that raw. Um, I will park by myself because it's quicker. But when it comes to tech, the car is, is really good compared to what I've seen in the other markets right now but I haven't tested some of the new other EBs so if they're gonna be just as good we'll see and find out and I'm excited to try the EV9 let's see what it has to offer or some of the other Chevy ones or even the Hyundai and see how they compare to the tech in the car you do get another screen back here but you're gonna be driving half the time if you got kids this is great for it but for the most part this is where your attention is gonna be and if this is something that fits you and you like in the tech we weren't able to go in depth but if this is something that you from just the brief information you're seeing if this is something that you think you like then this car might be the car for you 